All right, welcome to the National Catholic College Admission Association Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. Just a few housekeeping announcements though before we get started. Uh, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you though. And this is just one of many different sessions that's happening, so be sure to sign up for more. There is one more after this. And then lastly, this presentation is being recorded, and that recording will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash nccaa. All right, I'd now like to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters, starting first with Holy Cross College. Oh, I'm sorry, College of the Holy Cross. That's okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this presentation tonight about the College of the Holy Cross. My name is Alyssa Martinez. I'm an admissions counselor at Holy Cross, and I'm super excited to tell you all about us today. So first things first, some basics about us. We are a smaller institution. We have about 3,000 undergraduate students. So what this means for you in your college experience is that you have access to professors and research opportunities um, because of the fact that we are a small institution. So you get that opportunity inside the classroom to really develop those relationships, both with your peers and your professors. And we are undergraduate only, so you have access to all paid research opportunities, whether that be summer research, semester long research, or year long research. We are a liberal arts college, so our students take 32 courses throughout their four years. 12 of these are core requirements that are taken over nine disciplines of study, and we really like to encourage our students to take advantage of our liberal arts curriculum and take those classes that are academically interesting to them. All students do enter undeclared into the college, so you really have a lot of opportunities to try, you know, a lot of different things and really explore those academic interests that you might have. We are a Jesuit institution, and so it does not mean that every student at Holy Cross is Catholic, but it does mean that every student buys into our mission of being men, women, and people for and with others. And so what that means is that our students are actively engaged in the community, both on campus and off campus, constantly asking questions of what am I learning and why am I learning it? Why is it important in the larger context? And our students really strive to be agents of change, both inside and outside of the classroom. Outside of the classroom, they get involved in the community quite a bit. We are a part of the Worcester community. Worcester is the second largest city in New England and the second largest city in Massachusetts. It's about 40 minutes outside of Boston, and we do have free shuttles to take students into Worcester to explore different locations like the Art Museum in Worcester, the Concert Hall, the theater venue, um, and we do shuttle students to and from all internship sites. We also have shuttles that take students into Boston and Providence on the weekends. Um, with that being said, we are a very campus oriented school. So a lot of student life does take place within our gates on the hill and there's always something to do on campus and there's always something for everybody. We are a residential campus, so about 92% of our student population will choose to live on campus all four years and housing is guaranteed to our students throughout the four years. Your first year, your housing is determined based on your Montserrat. So Montserrat is the first year seminar that is unique to Holy Cross and unique to our students because it encompasses both the fall and the spring semester of your first year. So you really have that opportunity to delve deep into one particular topic or subject matter at the college just right away. And so the intention behind Montserrat is to acclimate you both academically and socially to our campus community. Academically, again, you get that full year to really explore one subject matter, to work with your professor, and just really get acquainted and adjusted to academic expectations at Holy Cross. And socially, it's great because not only do you learn with your classmates in the classroom, but you live with them in community. And so you have lots of opportunities within the first year to start really developing those relationships and building those bonds that you'll have throughout your four years at Holy Cross. 
a little bit about our admissions process. We accept both the coalition or the common application, either or it's up to you and your preference. Something that's also up to you and your preference is our optional response form. It's not a supplement that is required. It's just simply an opportunity to tell us a little bit more about who you are and why you're interested in Holy Cross. Not required and so you're not penalized, you're not looked at differently if you don't fill it out. Um, but it is certainly there if you want to give us some more insight. We are also test optional. So this is not new for us. We've been test optional since 2005, and we are completely comfortable reviewing applications, both with and without test scores. Students do not need to submit test scores to be considered for any sort of financial or merit-based aid. And so again, we're super comfortable reviewing those applications without test scores. If you feel like your test scores are an accurate representation, of who you are as a student, then certainly send them our way, but you're not required to. And one thing that you're not required to do, but that I really strongly encourage all students to do is to interview because we do value engagement throughout the admissions process. And we like seeing that students actively keep up with us and engage with us um, as they are applying to college. So that's something to certainly keep an eye out for and remember in the back of your head. Interviews are not scary. I know sometimes it sounds that way, but we're just so happy to learn more about you and it really helps us fully evaluate your candidacy at the college. And lastly, we are a 100% committed to meeting demonstrated financial need for US citizens and permanent residents. So we never want finances to be a barrier to our students and we wanna encourage all students, regardless of their background or situation to apply to our school and to really be able to succeed here. And so I will stop it there because I think I'm out of time, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I will do my best to get back to you. All right, thank you so much to College of the Holy Cross. And next up we have College of Mount St. Vincent. Hello everybody, just give me one second. I just gotta get my screen up. So welcome, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we are the College of Mount St. Vincent. My name is Mike Main. Um, let's get started. <clears throat> well done. Oh, come on. There we go, okay. Um, so our college was started in 1847 by the Sisters of Charity. We are located in the beautiful section of Riverdale, um, which is in the Bronx. And it's very close to Midtown Manhattan. Uh, we are a great school for upward mobility, first generation students. Um, average class size is about 20. We have a 13 to one student faculty ratio, and we have tremendous internship opportunities based on our location. Um, tuition, we are 39,500 for the year um, with additional 12,000 for room and board. Um, we also have our financial aid that kicks in. Um, we have Pell, TAP, SEOG, Stafford loans, merit-based scholarships, and a lot of our students end up finding us quite affordable. Um, we do give scholarships based on academic merit. And obviously when we recalculate your GPA, um, that is how we determine what level of scholarship that you would receive. Um, we also have premier scholarships. We have Seton Service and Leadership. We have Font Hill Writing and Corazon Aquino Awards. And those are awards for students who are um, exceptional in service or writing, or the Corazon Aquino is for Filipino students. As the former president of the Philippines, Corazon Aquino was once one of our students. Um, we have incredible programs. Some of our most popular are nursing, biology, psychology. Um, to name a few, uh, we have business and trading simulation labs, nursing simulation sale labs, TV studios, um, digital media labs, and we offer um, a lot of support services to our students. Um, these are just some of our areas of study, and because I only have six minutes, <laughs> you can take a look. You can also go to our website, mountstvincent.edu, um, and these uh, facts and figures are all on our website as well. Um, we do have a HEOP program, which is the Higher Educational Opportunity Program. We also have a MAP program for students who might need extra support. And just in general, we have student support services for typically all of our students that are available um, to anybody. 
We have five residence halls on campus. Um, our residential life, we are a student uh, population around 1800. And I'd say about 60% of our students live on campus and 40% commute. Um, but commuters and residents alike can share in the facilities and they feel like they're really part of a team. Uh, so, or part of the a team as far as uh, student activities and all that good stuff. Um, we do have a ton of organizations and clubs for students. I think one of our greatest strengths is that while we do want you to do well in the classroom, we also want you to be a social person and be, you know, uh, enrich your life, lives in other ways um, outside of the classroom. So we have a ton of cl uh, clubs and organizations, excuse me. Um, also back on that last slide, it mentioned community service. Um, for a small school, we do about 10,000 hours of community service a year. So that's pretty impressive considering the student population that we have. Um, and again, due to our proximity, we have a ton of internship and job opportunities at some of the biggest and most major corporations in all of uh, in, uh, New York City has to offer and Westchester for that matter. Um, we are division three athletics. Um, so we have a number of teams, both men and women's foot, uh, sorry, football, not football, sorry. Um, basketball, uh, soccer, track, um, lacrosse, and we actually have excellent facilities considering we are a D3 school. Um, we have state-of-the-art um, uh, weight room and our locker rooms and weight room have actually just been renovated. Student life, uh, we offer a ton of activities on campus and we love for students to get involved. And again, it's uh, offered to both commuters and residents alike. We want everyone to feel like they're part of uh, Mount St. Vincent and, you know, the tradition that we, we upheld, we uphold. Um, so the, our recalculated GPA last year, the average student had about an 85. Um, we are now SAT, ACT optional, which is fantastic. And you can apply to us via the Common App or the CMSV app. Um, these are our deadlines. So typically though, we are rolling admissions. We have soft deadlines, but we have priority deadlines. Um, I won't list them all because they're listed for you. And again, they all are on our website. And for time's sake, I'll keep going. Um, forgot about this video. <laughs> um, so that is essentially Mount St. Vincent. I believe I was a minute under my time. Um, but we are a nice Catholic school. We're a small private school in a great location. I can't say enough about the school, how great it is to its students, the programs. Um, we're very student oriented and um, I think we're a great choice. So if you're looking for a school in New York that's small, Catholic and private and affordable, we're for you. Thank you. I'll, I yield my time. All right, thank you so much to the uh, College of Mount St. Vincent. And next up we have Chaminade University of Honolulu. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Here in Hawaii, it is about 9 a.m. So um, let me go ahead and just jump up and get my screen ready for you folks. All right. Well, aloha, everyone. My name is Dior Ashton Teodosio, and I'm the Senior Admission Counselor at Shamana University of Honolulu. And I'm really excited to share with you all a little bit more about what makes Shamana unique. So our university is located in Hawaii, specifically on the island of Oahu. Um, Chaminade is tucked away in the neighborhood of Kaimuki. Um, but in general, we are less than two miles away from the famous Waikiki Beach and about an hour away from the best surf spots in the state. And looking more where our university is located, Kaimuki is a small residential neighborhood with a ton of different local coffee shops, old school diners, farmers markets, and quirky antique shops. When you're really in Kaimuki, you can feel the history that there is there. Um, and our university faces Wailai Avenue and Wailai was just voted number one as the best food block in the state of Hawaii. So if you are a foodie, this is definitely a place for you. Um, some of my favorite places, um, especially on a cold Hawaii winter day is gonna be um, Holly Vietnam, which is a little fub place. We also have a ton of different um, coffee shops that students will go off campus to study at. 
Um, but now that you know a little bit more about where we're located, um, here's a little bit more about Chaminade. Um, so we were founded in 1955. We are the only Catholic university in the Pacific. We're located on a 65 acre hillside called Kalai Pohaku and the Mariness or the Society of Mary um, came to Hawaii in the 1800s and then um, really started education there. Here at Chaminade, we're home to a little over 1300 undergraduate students coming from 14 different countries and 40 different states and territories. We have a warm family oriented campus Ohana and as a small private liberal arts university, um, our students receive a personalized education that prepares them for an ever changing future. We offer 25 majors through our traditional undergraduate program and our online program. And as a Catholic Marianist and Native Hawaiian serving institution, our goals inside the classroom are attuned with the real world, geared to promote justice and peace and the dignity and rights of everyone. With our average class size about 18, it's really easy for our students to get an organic mentoring or mentorship that they may be looking for. We have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and so our professors really get to know you. Um, you're not just a number in the classroom. Our professors get to know their students' names, where they're from, what they're passionate about, and what really drives them. Um, so it's really easy, again, um, to get that mentorship. All of our professors are still well known and active within their field, so networking and internship opportunities are really easy for our current students and alumni. Um, some of our most popular majors are going to be our forensic sciences program, our environmental and interior design, our nursing program, and then our um, biology or pre-med program. All of our majors are going to be um, direct entry. So from your first semester, we um, place you in a specific course geared to what you're interested in, but we don't really have our students declare their major fully until the second semester. Here at Chaminade, we also are dedicated to giving back to the community um, and 100% of all of our students will participate in service learning. As our professors are educating you outside the, or inside the classroom, we have a ton of staff members that are here to support you through your college experience. Um, our Office of Student Activities and Leadership have over 30 clubs and organizations that you can participate in. And this is gonna be anywhere from cultural clubs to academic clubs to adventurous clubs. Our fitness club goes hiking, surfing, zip lining. Um, they actually went paddle boarding not that long ago. Um, so really, if you're wanting to learn a little bit more about Hawaii or even adventure that's a really great club to participate in um, and we are also NCAA division two PAC West conference for athletics and our campus ministry have numerous opportunities for you to volunteer and to do retreats and give back to the community here in Hawaii some of our students do take advantage of our study abroad opportunities as well as our semester at sea program as um, we also have guaranteed internships for all majors and summer research opportunities for students that are interested in that. We don't have a live-in requirement here at Chaminade um, for first year students. So we really just want you to make the transition however you feel most comfortable, but we do have three residential halls located um, on our campus. Through our amazing financial aid, um, and scholarship opportunities, we are really um, committed to making college affordable for all students. Our tuition ranges from 26,000 to 33,000 and 97% of all of our students receive some form of financial aid. With the average amount of scholarships to grants is about 15,000. Um, our merit-based scholarships are automatically awarded upon acceptance. Um, and then through our signature scholarships, we do have Catholic scholarships available. So if you attend a Catholic high school, um, specifically in the mainland, then you are eligible for our Chaminade Scholars um, Scholarship, which is up to 50% off of tuition for all four years. In regards to admission, we are rolling, um, we have a rolling basis and we're still open for students that may be still looking for fall 2021. Um, we have a holistic admission approach. So you can apply either through our institutional app or through the Common App. And as I wrap up my six minutes, here's some ways to stay connected. You can schedule a virtual campus tour um, or you can visit us in person. My contact information is there and I'll go ahead and put it in the chat as well. Um, but thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you so much to Shamanan University of Honolulu. And next up we have Bellarmine University. Hi. 
Hi, everyone. While I pull it um, up my screen here, my name is Anna Hampton, and I am an undergraduate admission counselor at Bellarmine University. We are located in Louisville, Kentucky, um, and we have about 2,500 undergraduate students here at Bellarmine. Um, what this really gives you is those small class sizes. Um, our student to faculty ratio is right about 12 to 1, with the average class size being about 19 or 20 students per class. What this allows for our students, it's really the opportunity to make those close personal connections with not only peers and classmates, um, but professors as well. We don't use TAs in any of our courses. Um, so all of our faculty members are here really to teach you guys and to be sure um, that they're answering any questions that you guys have and that you're able to form those, those close relationships with them. That'll be really helpful when it comes down the line. Um, to give you a little bit more perspective of Bellarmine as a whole, we offer 100% of our students a merit-based scholarship at time of acceptance. So on your acceptance letter, you will actually see that merit scholarship amount. These are gonna be primarily based off that high school GPA. Um, our average institutional award is about $30,000. Um, and again, these are renewable merit scholarships over the course of four years for students. To put those scholarships in perspective for you, our tuition this year sets at about 43,500, and this also includes books and course materials. So you won't have those additional expenses when you come to Bellarmine. Our average starting salary of Bellarmine graduates is about $50,000. And in fact, we're number one in the state of Kentucky for mid-career earnings um, of college graduates. Um, to, so we also, uh, through our Career Development Center, um, we actually follow up with all, all of our students for up to six months after graduation with a career advisor, just to be sure we're there to help you guys when it does come time to finding those jobs or entering in grad school. 99% of our students um, that graduate from Bellarmine have a job or, or are in grad school within six months of graduation. So we really proud our, pride ourselves on um, having really well pre prepared students um, to enter into the job market or to further their education through grad school. It's a really exciting year for Bellarmine as well because this year is our inaugural year as a D1 institution. We are now in the ASUN conference. So that is typically um, the Southeastern United States. And so we're really excited for what this means to the campus community as a whole and just really what that means um, for upgrades and things like that coming to campus. Um, but all around, that's super exciting. I also wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about our tradition here at Bellarmine. Um, we have a rich tradition here um, and a ton of events that go on around campus. So we have about 70 registered student clubs and organizations. So regardless if you're interested in art or fishing or, um, or political science, doing mock trial, anything like that. There's really something for everybody here on campus. And then one of our organizations called the Bellarmine Activities Council actually hosts a variety of traditional events on campus for our students every year. One of the most popular ones is late night bingo. Um, it sounds silly because it's, you know, bingo, but our students get really into it. And it's just a great time to bring the Bellarmine community as a whole um, together just to just to hang out, win some cool prizes um, and engage that way. But there are a ton of other events on here um, that we throw for students. So Bellaroo is one coming up soon. And that's a play on Bonnaroo. And so it's a music festival um, and there's food trucks and prizes and ice cream and things like that. So it's always fun in the spring around campus. I also wanna to touch on our application process a little bit for you guys. We are on the Common App and then we have an application on our website as well. Both are free and we do not require an essay. Um, what we do require are your high school transcripts and a letter of recommendation. We are now also a test optional institution. Um, and so this will be in place. And again, this will not um, affect your merit award at all. So it's totally up to you if you submit this test score. We always encourage students, if you feel really comfortable on your test score and you think that it's an accurate representation of your academic ability, go ahead and send it in. Um, but we also understand that um, high school GPA is a lot more indicative of your collegiate success. So um, we'll definitely take a look at that in your application as a whole when reviewing those. Um, so definitely keep that in mind as you walk through your application process. I will also say we have an early action deadline that is usually the beginning or mid-November with a priority deadline of February 1st. 
That being said, we do operate on rolling admissions, so you can apply anytime throughout the year, um, and we do accept students um, throughout the year. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you are still looking for schools or if you're an upcoming or rising senior, um, just kind of keep those dates in the back of your head, and we'll definitely help you throughout that admission process. Um, I'm also going to pop up my contact information on the screen if you guys do have any questions or anything like that. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. We're really here for you as you start your college search and as you're looking into these institutions. Um, so I'm always here again to, to help answer any of those questions. I know with the short time we have today, um, you guys might have some more specific questions. So definitely don't hesitate to email me or call me using that information on your screen. And I will go ahead and wrap it up there, but thank you guys so much. You got Sorry, it, Andy. I didn't unmute myself for some reason. That's Next right. up is Providence College. Okay. I will get my screen all ready to go. Okay, so thanks for attending and learning a little bit more about different schools. My job here today is to help define who Providence College is and what we are all about as an institution. So here are some fast facts about Providence College. Uh, I think probably the most unique part about PC is that we're the only school in the country that was founded and is still run by Dominican friars. So there's about 50 Dominican priests who live on campus. They do things that you would expect a priest to do. They say mass on Sunday. They teach religion and theology courses. They also do things you might not expect a priest to do. I've seen some Dominicans start some food fights on campus. Um, we have a couple that teach in a lot of different subject areas. Um, one has been making news for his research on uh, COVID vaccine. So that's always been pretty cool. And I think that that aspect of campus, as I said, is really unique to Providence and something that our students really appreciate. I would describe us as a medium sized institution. We are right over 4,000 people. So I think that creates a nice balance of a big enough place where you'll see new people and new faces essentially every day that you're on campus. But at the same time, it's a small enough environment where your academic classes will be very small. Uh, the average class size is 20. And I would say that the majority of your classes are going to be between 15 to 20 students, a lot will be smaller than that. Uh, but definitely that one-on-one -on -one relationship that you have with professors is one of the hallmarks of a PC education. We're located in the capital city of Rhode Island, the smallest state within the US. We're about an hour south of Boston and three hours east of New York City. I mentioned about the Dominican Friars and their whole mantra and what they believe is the pursuit of Veritas. That's the school's motto. You would see that on a bunch of different places when you enter campus. And they believe that you can arrive at truth using both faith and reason. And it's that interplay of faith and reason that is at the core of your academic experience at Providence. In no place is it more exemplified than the development of Western Civilization Program. We call it CIV for short, but this is a two-year class where everyone takes it at Providence College, no matter what your major is or what you end up studying. And it's a team-taught interdisciplinary class that lasts for all of freshman year and all of sophomore year. The last semester of sophomore year is what we call the colloquium semester, which basically means it's a fancy way of saying you get to pick the topic that you'd like to focus in a little bit more on. So here's just some examples of some of the current colloquium topics that are being taught right now. You get a new team of professors for your colloquium. So for example, the last one on this list, money, markets, and morality is team taught by a finance professor and a theology professor. And so while development of Western Civ is definitely based in the humanities and mainly through the lenses of philosophy, theology, literature, and history, I think that the relevancy of development of Western Civ applies itself to any major and any course of study at Providence College's campus. There are 49 different majors and 39 different minors, and you can certainly check all those programs out if you head over to our website. I think academically speaking, we have this saying at PC that learning happens everywhere. And what we mean by that is that your experiences are not just happening inside the classroom, 
but honestly, in everything that you're doing in extracurricular involvement, in things like study abroad, internships and research. Obviously in a pandemic, study abroad has been put on pause for all of our students, but normally in, in, in normal circumstances, a little more than 60% of our students end up studying abroad over the course of their four years at Providence College. There's no course of major that would ever prevent you from studying abroad. And so it's something that I like to encourage to students because we think that's a valuable experience for you. Not only is it a fun experience, but I think it also gives you a sense of perspective about your place in the world, your place in society, and what you can do to make it a better place. Because of our location and the fact that we have very close access to a downtown capital city, that means our partnerships with different companies is very strong. So as you can tell from the slide, a pretty big percentage of our students are doing at least one internship over the course of their four years. And internships, I think, have kind of changed so that it's not just something that happens during the academic year, but they're basically year-round activities. So if you are coming from a different part of the country than the Northeast, and you're at home for the summer, and you'd like Providence College to help you get an internship in your local area, we have a pretty great alumni network, so you'll be able to do that. So internships, again, happening during the year, over the summer, Christmas break, spring break, it's definitely a year long activity. And I think that when people think of small liberal arts schools, uh, student research isn't normally something that's associated with that, but that's something that is going to be available to you on our campus. So right now, a little less than 40% of students are conducting research, but that number has only been growing in recent years. And again, because of the relationship that you have with professors, a lot of our students are being published. Um, they're traveling to conferences with professors and presenting on their work there. So it works out pretty well. Lastly, I just wanted to cover the fact that we are a Division I institution, so the fact that we uh, have that balance of small school atmosphere but big school feel when it comes to athletics is definitely something that our students tend to appreciate. There's just a list of some of the sports that we have and their success in recent years, um, and you can certainly find out more about Providence definitely through our website, and you can find my contact, my contact info there as well. So I think my time's up. I'm going to turn it back over to Andy. All right, thank you so much to Providence College. And now I'd actually like to invite uh, all of our presenters to turn their cameras back on and let's do a little Q&A. We'll do this in a kind of a round robin fashion just to try to get some additional information from them. So the first question I wanna ask is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and start with College of the Holy Cross. I think this is a great question. So my biggest piece of advice to all students going through the college search process is to really take advantage of all the resources that the college offers to learn more about the college. For us on our end, we do value student engagement. So we do like to see that students have done their research and are applying to Holy Cross because they're confident it's the place for them. Um, it says a lot about a student who takes initiative, interviews, sends admissions counselors, emails just to say hi. So I think that's my biggest piece of advice is just to really be engaged throughout your application process and beyond. How about College of Mount St. Vincent? All right. <clears throat> I would say uh, basically the same thing. Um, stay in touch with your admissions counselor. We're all very friendly people. We love answering your questions. Um, and we like to get to know you. And uh, from what I've heard, everyone's done a tremendous job. Good job, everybody. Um, is that, you know, bottom line is we're all nice schools and we're looking for the right fit. Um, and we want you to be the right fit. So we want you to visit our campuses and we want you to take advantage of everything we have to offer while we're offering it. So whether it's accepted student day, a tour, virtual or otherwise these days, um, really just um, use us as an ally, rely on us and we'll get you through the whole process. Also, utilize the website, a lot of great information there, but we're better. So that would be my advice. 
I'm going to piggyback off of what Michael said, um, visit the campus. I mean, you can look at a bunch of different schools and see that they all have maybe a psychology program, but what makes, you know, their campus unique? And I always tell students um, to walk through the campus when you're with the tour guides, ask them those questions. I manage our tour guides, so I'm always like, drill them, make sure you ask them all those questions because you need to see if you can see yourself as a current student there. Um, so that is my biggest advice is if you have the chance, visit the campus or do the virtual stuff that we have um, nowadays too. Yeah, and I would also agree with all of that as well. Um, and for most of us being smaller liberal arts universities, um, our faculty really like to engage with prospective students as well. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out to faculty members about respective programs that you're interested in. Um, if you're kind of scared to do that on your own, ask your admission counselor. Um, you know, like everyone has said, we're really there as a resource for you and we would love to help connect you. Um, we're generalists, so we know a lot about different programs, but if you have have really specific questions about majors or maybe the path that you're looking to go on. And we can definitely connect you with faculty members around campus to go ahead and start forming those meaningful connections before you're even an enrolled student. So definitely don't be scared to, to reach out to those faculty members at the schools that you're looking at as well. It's always tough to go last with this question to come up with something that not anyone else has said. Um, but I think I got one. And so I think all of us would agree that our current students are our best resource. I mean, obviously, you know, as Anna mentioned, we're, we're generalists and we know a lot about a, a lot of aspects of our campus. But I think if, if you can connect with members of our current student body and whatever school that you're looking at, whether it be one of our institutions or you have a list of schools, I think getting in touch with those current students and finding out the most authentic answers about what it's like to, to live there, what it's like to take classes, what is there to do on the weekends, that will give you a really good idea if you can also see yourself on that particular campus. So definitely utilize and connect with as many current students as possible. Great, thank you. Yeah, a lot of good advice. And like Matt said, uh, it is kind of difficult to go last, but that's because a lot of the advice is pretty similar, right? Um, it is just utilize those resources. You definitely want to do that. All right, so this is always a fun question. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll go with uh, College of the Holy Cross to start off again. So this is a tough one because Holy Cross is a school that's very rooted in tradition. So I have a lot of favorites, but I think my favorite is our fall homecoming. Um, it overlaps with parents weekend and family weekend. So it's kind of a nice opportunity, especially for first year students to introduce their parents to the campus, to introduce them to their new friends. Um, and we are a division one school. So the game itself is always kind of a big event. Uh, my favorite part, however, is walking down to the field because you, we are built on a hill. So when you walk down, you really get this full look of you know, all of the community. We always talk about Holy Cross being a tight-knit community, but you get to really visually see it. We have a lot of alumni that come back. And so that's really great to be able to connect with them, especially as you are transitioning to becoming an upperclassman as a junior or senior. Holy Cross alumni love Holy Cross. And so it's a kind of a nice networking opportunity as well. So lots of different reasons why I love it. But um, yeah, that's my favorite tradition is our fall homecoming. And how about College in Mount St. Vincent? I'm going to say graduation. Um, I know it's it's an event, it's and it's a tradition, obviously, every year. Um, but especially when you work at a school that serves typically underserved students, watching them graduate, oh, the parents, the family. I mean, uh, let's say if we're graduating a class of 400, they'll probably close to 2,000 people in attendance because <laughs> everyone it's a big moment for this family um it's upward mobility it's a it's a source of hope um they're you know first generation students graduating is a beautiful beautiful thing so to keep it short and simple graduation is just my absolute favorite on so any school i've worked for it's remarkable and typically as admissions people we don't have to go i love going it's the best so thanks 
Um, my favorite tradition at Shamanad is going to be our Founders Week. Um, it's where we celebrate our founder of the Society of Mary, which is Blessed William Joseph Shamanad, which our university is named after. Um, but specifically, there's like so much different, like different events throughout the entire week. But Saturday, we do a big service. Um, so the entire campus community comes together, faculty, staff, and students, and then does a big service project. And so um, that's probably my favorite tradition on campus. We've done it for like as long as I've been at Shamanon, even as an undergraduate student. So um, definitely a good one um, for all students to participate in. Awesome. And I mentioned a little bit, one of our favorite traditions on campus is called late night bingo. Um, so it, we hold that a couple of times throughout the semester. Um, and again, sounds silly. You're like a bunch of college kids getting together to play bingo. Doesn't really necessarily sound like it would be a lot of fun. Um, but our students are really competitive. And typically our um, late night bingo days are themed. Um, and so the prizes that students can get are kind of based off that theme. So some things that we've given, given away in the past are like pieces of technology. So computer, iPad, a record player. And so it ranges from like big prizes like that all the way down to something like homemade cookie mix. Um, so especially right at the beginning, the students are really into it to try to get those big prizes. Um, but again, a ton of traditional events on campus that really do just bring the Bellarmine community together and that um, we really love to do as, as a campus. And so um, definitely try to get engaged in, in those traditions on your college campus because it it's great and it does bring everyone together. I like this question a lot. Um, I have to confess though, I, I think a lot of the fun with these traditions is finding them out on your own, right? And like kind of being surprised by them when you get to campus. Um, but there's definitely a lot that our students enjoy at PC. I actually looked at my Facebook memories and on this date six years ago, was the Providence College uh, Men's Hockey National Championship, and it was the first national title for men's hockey in school's history. Right around this time of year, you know, usually the basketball and uh, hockey teams are in postseason play. And again, with the blend of being a small academic place, but but being a D1 team that traditionally does pretty well athletically means that the entire campus comes together and it's an awesome atmosphere to have on campus. Um, so I was just looking at the pictures with me and my college roommates uh, at the national championship game because we all got to go and it was pretty awesome. Um, and I think a lot of our students would also agree that having D1 athletics um, definitely makes for a pretty cool college experience. Very cool. Yes, this is, I agree. This is a great question. It's one of my favorites. Uh, we got a few minutes. Let's try one more. Uh, not as much of a question, but just give an interesting or fun fact about your school. And again, we'll start with College of the Holy Cross. Okay, I think one that I have to throw out there is that Dr. Anthony Fauci is a graduate of Holy Cross and he's really putting our school on the map um, recently. So that's kind of a nice fun fact about us. And College of Mount St. Vincent. This is one of my favorite fun facts is, uh, I know some of you might be a little young, but Law & Order SVU, Hudson University, that's us. Filmed at our school, Benson and Stabler, remarkable. I tell that to guidance counselors and they're like, what? That's my favorite show. I'm like, I know, that's why I tell you. It's, I find that great. Of course, they haven't done it since I've been there, but hopefully that'll change and I'll get to see Mariska Hargate. Let's hope, fingers crossed. Actually, I just found this fact out from a little history book that we had in our admissions office. Babe Ruth has visited our campus when we had a baseball team. And so I think that's kind of cool that Babe Ruth has come to Chaminade, especially in Hawaii. So that's a little fun fact. Awesome. Uh, mine is a recent fun fact. Um, as I mentioned, it, this is our first year as a Division One school, and our men's basketball team actually had the fourth, fourth longest winning streak this year out of Division One history. And so that was really great. We all got super excited about that. Um, and so super proud of our men's basketball team for that one. So uh, my fun fact also kind of ties into the traditions as well, but it's definitely fun. Um, last night was an annual event on campus uh, known as Cheese Fest, where all of our cultural clubs get together and uh, there are food dishes uh, highlighting 
different cheeses from all over the world. And I think you'll find out pretty quickly that the easiest way to a college student's heart is through the stomach. So free food on campus is always a big attraction and Cheese Fest is one of my favorites. So yeah, it's a good one. Very cool. I like those interesting facts. There were a lot of really good ones in there. All right, I do wanna say thank you so much to all of our presenters today. And also thank you to all of you for joining us. Um, when you close this window, there is gonna be a link to a very quick four question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you might be able to provide. Also, as I mentioned, there is one more session after this. So please sign up for that uh, if you wanna hear about some more schools. And lastly, this recording and all of the other session recordings will be available in about a week at strivescan.com slash NCCAA. Thanks again, everyone, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.